In the previous video, we saw that the shape of the graph of a function that is close to the zero depends on its multiplicity. So we're going to take a look at some further examples, just so that you can take a look to see what these graphs look like. So um, I have five graphs drawn here, and we're going to go through each of them and then take a look at the multiplicity of each zero. So in the first graph, we have three zeros here, and we can see they all just go straight through. Um, so there's no kind of extra uh, flat line or anything. So we would say that all of these three zeros have a zero of multiplicity one. In the second graph, it's also a cubic function, so you can see it had a cubic in the first one, there's two bumps. In the second, it also has two bumps, so it's also a cubic function. However, this has a zero multiplicity one because we can see that it goes straight through. But on the second bump here, notice how it hits the x-axis and then turns back around and goes back down. So this second zero is of multiplicity two. Now, in the third, fourth, and fifth, these are actually special cases. So I'm going to give you the equations of these. So we have y equals x cubed here, y equals x to the power of 4, and y equals x to the power of 5. So you can see that this almost looks like a line, but it has a little flat bump here right at the 0. So whenever you see something that's a little bit flatter, and you know that it's actually a 0 of multiplicity, three, but if you look at the x to the power of five, you'll notice that it's even flatter. So this is a zero of multiplicity five. So what's common about these two is that you can see that it hits the x-axis, it flattens out, and then keeps going up. So same with this one. So it goes in one direction, it flattens out, and then it keeps on going in the same direction it was going before. Now, you can see that a typical cubic, the general ones that we see, it goes up and then down and back up. So that you can see the two distinct bumps, but notice that in the x cubed one, there aren't really two distinct bumps because this has a zero of multiplicity three. Now in the fourth one, where it's x to the power of four, notice how this looks like a parabola but it's quite a bit flatter on the bottom here where the zero is. So this is a zero of multiplicity four. Okay. So let's just review this again. So notice that when the zero, um, sorry, when the exponents are odd numbers, it flattens out, but the sign of the function um, changes. So notice that it goes from negative to positive. So same with the at power of x to the 5, it goes from negative to positive. Now even with these cubic functions, when these are multiplicity of 1, we can see that it goes from negative to positive, back to negative, and back to positive. Same with this part. This is zero multiplicity one, it went from negative to positive. Okay. So for a zero of odd multiplicity, the sign of the function changes. But when we take a look at the zero of multiplicity for the even ones, multiplicity, the sign of the function does not change. <clears throat> so you can see that for the zero multiplicity two, oh, actually, you know what? I just noticed I have this incorrect. I'm just going to change this back, sorry, how about that? So this should be positive, and this should be negative. All right, so for the zero of multiplicity two, we can see that the sign before this zero was negative, and then after the zero, it's still negative, okay? For the zero multiplicity four, the graph was on above the x-axis, so it was positive, after it hits the zero, it goes back up, and it's still positive. So when the exponent is even, or there's an, 
0 a multiplicity of an even number, the sign of the function does not change.